Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ancient Warfare Answers. I'm Murray, and I'll be taking you through this question today, which is short and sharp, but probably will lead to a very long answer from me. Uh, but before we get to that, of course, you can ask us a question if you like, uh, and I will give you your weekly fix of Ancient Warfare-related material if I can. Um, and that is you can just go on to uh, the email, or you can send us a message, or you can join us at Patreon, uh, www.patreon.com forward slash Ancient Warfare podcast uh you can join us at a legionary and optio or a centurion level even get a copy of the magazine and of course you can ask us a question on any of your burning ancient military history topics such as the question that we got from gerard on email which is as i said short and sharp who is your favorite ancient military author well gosh there are so many to choose from, and I know that everyone who does the full Ancient Warfare podcast panel would have a different opinion. Uh, and certainly, I can tell you now that my choice is going to be uh, on the edges of that, um, but there are very good reasons for who I choose. Um, and, you know, going through the sources, uh, Herodotus is still going to be my favorite read. Herodotus is just a fabulous author to read, even just to dip into. Uh, you know, you've got Livy, Polybius, Xenophon, um, and all the way through to Ammianus Marcellinus, who you know deals with the fourth century uh, in Rome. And for me, though, um, the two—it's got to be a tie. I'm sorry, uh, and that is the two surviving authors of stratagem collections, uh, who are Polyanus of Macedon, uh, who writes a collection of stratagem stratagems in the 160s AD for Lucius Verus and Marcus Aurelius. And the second is Luci uh, Sextus Julius Frontinus, who wrote a collection of stratagems in the 80s AD uh, in the reign of Domitian. Uh, if you were to push me and say which of the two, you have to choose one, you can't choose both, um, it would be Frontinus uh, rather than Polyanus. And I, I apologize to Polyanus for that. Um, but the reason that I have so much affection for those two authors is that those are the only two stratagem collections from antiquity to survive. Uh, one written in the 80s AD, one written in the 160s AD. Uh, both of them cover all of military history up to that point. Um, so for instance, in uh, Polyanus, you've got stratagems which stretch back to Greek mythology and Homer all the way through to, uh, he, has a, he has a single stratagem of Nero in his collection. So it goes from, you know, uh, mythological period right through to the 60s AD. Frontinus uh, has less uh, mythological um, anecdotes, but he covers Greek history and Roman history all the way through to uh, very contemporary history. The, the latest anecdote, we think, dates to 83 AD, which is his own career, uh, which is remarkable. And I've written about that in Ancient Warfare magazine, actually. So, the reason uh, that I'm, I favor them, I wrote uh, two master's degrees, um, wrote a thesis on Polyanus of Macedon, and I wrote a thesis on uh, Sextus Julius Frontinus. So, so I uh, am enamored with both. But one of the other fascinating reasons that I like the stratagem collections is because they are a collection of anecdotes. Uh, Frontinus has 584 anecdotes. Polyanus says he's going to give you 900 anecdotes in his eight books. And... In those stratagems, what you've got is a collection of military precepts, which each one of them distills some kind of strategic lesson. And in the past, uh, people have plundered those uh, anecdotes for historical information. And they either use them to say this corroborates our main historical source or this contradicts our main historical source, therefore we should reject it. And for me, however, the military precept aspect of these stratagems is the thing that seems to have been ignored. They're a practical genre. They're intended to teach generalship to a reader in a very vague way uh, that you should, you know, read these stratagems as a way of understanding how a particular general dealt with a particular strategic or tactical situation. And for me, that practicality is maintained throughout the history of this genre. Um, and that's an interesting thing in itself. Frontinus is a remarkable general. Um, he serves from Claudius all the way through to, uh, well, he continues his career under Nerva and Trajan, but as a general, he serves uh, under Claudius, under Nero, under the four 
uh, emperors. He serves under Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian, uh, which is a remarkable military career. Um, and so he's a practical soldier who writes a collection of stratagems. Uh, we've lost his De Re Militari, uh, which he wrote before the stratagems, and he wrote the stratagems as an appendix almost to uh, give an, a practical example of what he'd said in the De Re Militari as practical examples of generals putting their strategic nous into action. And Polyinus, on the other hand, is a uh, he's a, a rhetor and advocatus. So he's a he's a speech uh, writer and lawyer. And so in the 160s, he's writing a practical military handbook, but he's not a military man himself. And so the criticism is normally made that, you know, you've you've got the deterioration of, of practical literature being written by philosophers and armchair historians. But I think that the practicality of the genre uh, doesn't mean that if you're not a practical military man, you can't contribute to it. So uh, the practicality of them continues um, and beyond them, uh, and they begin to get read in the Middle Ages, or they continue being read in the Middle Ages and beyond, certainly Frontinus does. And so for me, the, the reason that they are so informative is you can read them as historical anecdotes if you want, um, but underneath each anecdote is some kind of practical lesson for how that strategic situation led to that general being successful. Remarkably, you can get con stratagems that contradict one another, where one general does one thing and another general does the exact opposite in what seems to be very similar circumstances, which is, again, uh, I think the major lesson for all of that literature is expediency. Make a decision and go with it. And it doesn't matter whether you could have made a better decision tomorrow. You made that decision today, and that's the one you have to follow through. It's kind of like a management uh, handbook, really. Um, but the other thing that I love about the stratagems is that in several cases, the, the anecdotes that are preserved in Frontinus and Polyinus are of battles that we have lost the main historical narrative of. And in most cases, uh, virtually all cases really, you can, uh, you can actually, uh, you can reconcile the stratagem to the historical account. Um, it's only very rarely that, that the two aren't reconcilable whether the stratagem is, is simply a, a closer snapshot of what was happening in a wider battle when you've got a source, or indeed, uh, if you have an unreliable historical source, that possibly the anecdote records a more accurate version of history than the, the very vague uh, big picture source that we have. And so in a couple of battles, such as the, um, the Dacian Wars of Domitian or the Germanic Wars of Domitian, where Frontinus is the only source, um, He's the best source of material we have for the campaign for how those campaigns were fought. Uh, with Polyinus, for instance, he's the best source that we have for the Battle of Chironia in 338 uh, BC. Uh, unfortunately, Diodorus is very fragmentary at that point. Uh, we've lost the um, we've lost the narrative of Xenophon by that point. His his uh, histories has stopped, and Polybius just doesn't pick it up. So you've got this very important battle. Uh, where, you know, again, Arian and the historians of Alexander don't really focus on the Battle of Chironia because it's obviously Philip rather than Alexander. And so the best source of it is, in fact, the, the stratagems of Polyinus, which deal with it under Philip. And that gives us the fullest picture we have of that battle. And I think it's a battle that you can reconstruct from Polyinus rather than uh, just say, well, we don't actually know exactly what happened. Um, there's another uh, interesting one where... Polyinus's version of the Battle of Cunaxa um, on first appearance would look to contradict what Xenophon says. And yet, when you read Catesias, it actually supports what Catesias says about the Battle of Cunaxa. Uh, and so that then raises this question of well, which source do we trust more? Um, and uh, I generally come down on the side of my stratagem collection, which, again, you can accuse me of bias. I probably would not be able to deny that. But for me, they're a fascinating uh genre um they're a fascinating snapshot of a literary world that's very much been lost um but they are endlessly fascinating uh endlessly brief you can you know read a stratagem a day for four or five years and never have to repeat one uh and to me they are the my favorite uh, ancient military authors thank you very much see you next time